Hello. Today I would like to show you project that I'm currently working on. So over here I've got a PRC-10. This is a US Manpack Tactical VHF Radio. As you can see I've got it open because it's not working. And we've got a, we've got a problem. I was trying to diagnose where it might be lying but first of all I had to create a battery because this is a tube radio it requires a very high anode voltage and as you can see I know that looking terrible but over here we've got a 16 9 volt batteries that are connected in series with a center center tab over here we've got a, a center tab and we have this everything connected using that schematic over here it's quite simple because each pin of the of the plug is labeled so you just have to follow and find the correct pin and as you can see over here we've got need to put a mine negative 1.5 volt and plus 6 volt and we can read that from the diagram so that part go quite easy I power on the radio and I was unable to hear anything from the receiver the first thing I I check do we have uh, oscillator running and yes it's running and we also have a transmit but we cannot hear anything and I cannot hear anything with the volume to the max and with the squelch completely off there is absolutely nothing in the in the headset handset okay so as you can hear we've got our radio working we've got a hissing sound and I can try to transmit one two three four five one two three four five radio check radio check testing 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 and it's working just fine I can use the, the volume adjustment so the audio amplifier is working and the problem is that the squelch relay is not being energized I'm right now rotating the squelch and I'm going to show you what I did just to make this quick check over here is a relay that is switching the squelch circuitry as you can see it's a really really beefy relay and this is something I did I add a jumper wire that is bypassing the relay between pin 3 and 5 and pin, pin number 4 I left unpopulated, I just unsoldered it and I secured it with a tape so it's not going to connect it to anything and over there is the schematic as you can see so by the default the pin number 4 and the pin number 4 and five should be connected together and that's exactly what I did and where the problem lies the problem is looks like it lies in that relay this is the relay that is switching the the squelch circuitry and it's not working it looks like it's shorted I did a test, I just connect the, the pins 
from the relay I shorted them and the radio starts working and also I can hear the the relay clicking while adjusting the the squelch level so I think the squelch circuitry in the radio is working and we've got just a problem with that module but the worst is that I cannot find any replacement absolutely nowhere even including like eBay so I can't even grab this as you can see it was made by by Siemens and we can we can check the relay very very simple over here we've got our schematic that focus and as you can see we've got a uh, pin number four is a common one and it will be normally close to the pin number five and when we apply a, a current across the coil it's going to switch to the pin number three so pin number four and five should read right now in the normally normally close position short so four and five over here we've got four and five let's check and yes we've got zero ohm but if we measure the pin three and five which should be separated three and five over here we've got some kind of resistance and this shouldn't be because three and five they are totally separated and between four and three in our normal condition when the when the the arm is over there we should also have a uh, fully open so four and three four and three we also have a short so something is wrong with this relay I cannot hear anything rattling inside maybe maybe I can open it I'm not sure if it's welded or is this a solder maybe I can try to open this because uh, finding a replacement I think it's a no-go for me so I'm going to try to open this I'm trying to open this relay by just unsoldering the bottom and using the solder wig but I can tell you right now that it's a terrible job because that everything is acting like a one big heat sink and I'm not sure if I didn't damage already some of the internal components but I will continue and we are going to see what's inside For you just that was a one second ago but for me actually it was a couple of months you were able to see what was inside the relay after opening after opening which I managed to slip the screwdriver and damage the coil and internal parts so I make the the original relay completely useless you can see that inside the metal case 
that was like tiny solder whiskers going out growing out from the from the external shell and they were touching the pins inside the relay and they were causing a short between pins that should not touching each other by the by the design of the relay so that was the problem right now i think if i know that the problem was caused by the the solder whiskers that were touching i would just apply a large amount of current between the the shell and the and the pins that was shorted and that current would be just like a burning that whisker and the relay should start working again that would be my my way of fixing that relay without opening if i would know that that will be the problem but i would never think of the that the solder whiskers inside of a enclosed encapsulated soldered case will be a problem so right now i know that and you can see that on the pictures before and i was trying very hard to put my hands on uh, exactly the same relay and i was completely fail but one of the fellow ham radio operators was con kind enough to let me put hands of a, a older one model as you can see that one is completely open which have a very big advantage because you can just clear clear the clean the contacts if anything bad happened so as you can see the the metal closed one should stay indefinitely good and it fail so as you can see sometimes having an open relay is better and that one is working perfect this is the this is the older one over here you can see the markings that that will create a perfect match for our relay and I'm going to mount it and the relay is insulated on that elements on that washers so we are going to do exactly the same thing we are going to insulate that and right now over here I've got our pins shorted because I was playing with that radio and I just short the squelch so I have this radio fully open all the time so now I'm going to put the the new old relay and I'm going to try to wire it up so please stay with me okay so I have a problem I mounted the relay inside the radio but it doesn't work I still can hear the hissing so my first move be that I need to check does the squelch circuitry is working so what I did over here I've got my alligator clips hooked up to the relay to the coil of the relay connectors that was attached over here and they are going straight to my multimeter by that colorful cables and right now the relay is not energized and we should hear the hissing but as soon I start to go to about a half as you can see we've got our coil energized so the squelch circuitry is working if we go to the to the off position the squelch is not working if we go to the maximum the squelch is working and the coil should be energized uh, and start muting the muting the audio signal and what was the problem because that the radio must be in design to the to the solid to the enclosed relay and that one is open and it must have a different tension and current for the for the arm and i have to grab over here by using a pair of pliers and very gently 
adjust the tension on that on that element as you can see we have got also adjustment over here and over there but I didn't I didn't use that but we should have exactly the normally close should be continuity and the normally open should be open until we energize the coil and that will create a short between that some kind of the carbon this look like carbon film so we have to adjust to to get exactly the operation that we should so now we should have the contact between that and that part and when energize between this and this and that one have output over there as you can see from the from the build so I'm after that adjustment and now we can see can we can we energize it I'm not sure if you was able to see that but the arm is moving I'm trying not to you can see I'm going to bring the camera to give you a better look and I'm energizing it and short it open short it and open so as you can see it's working perfect and I'm 100% sure that after mounting it right now it will be uh, fully working so let's try that and just one word of the reminder the relay is fully insulated from the from the main body and this is the two screw and they have a uh, that type of washer that is insulated and that part is going from the bottom to insulate the screw and over there we have to put that I think that's the mica plate that is uh, insulating our relay base so keep in mind that, that that's need to be put okay so we are done we are done everything was hooked up and we are ready to to test so let's power it on and we can hear the hissing because we've got our squelch off and we're going to adjust the squelch until we are quiet as you can see about five this is because I've got a lot of noise from the light and other things even without the antenna but I'm going to go to the maximum setting I'm going to turn the volume on and with another radio I'm going to to call our set one two three four five one two three four five radio check radio check one two three four five radio check radio check radio check as you can hear it's working perfect one two three four five one two three four five radio check and quiet one two three four five radio check radio check so as you can hear we successfully managed to, to repair the squelch on our PRC 10 so thank you very much for watching I hope that video will be useful and help someone diagnose the same problem. See you next time and bye bye.